Does Hamas fear that Jews in Israel are trying to fulfill a biblical prophecy? Will the red heifer in Jerusalem be sacrificed before or during Passover 2024? Will this holy war lead to the end of the world? All of this and more today on The End Time Show. Welcome to The End Time Show. Vince Segal here with Doug Norvell. We're so happy you've joined us today. Will the red heifer be sacrificed within the next 11 days? Is that what we're going to see coming up? Uh, if you enjoy the red heifer updates, if you like us keeping you up to date with what's going on with Bible prophecy in connection to the red heifer, let us know in the comments. Just write red heifer so we know that this is a topic that we should keep covering. Also, before we get into the specific subject, I want to remind you uh, that today's show is brought to you by sat123.com. You know, cell phone networks are fragile and can go down quickly. We all experienced that a month or so ago, but not with sat123.com. Your sat phone will work from anywhere on earth with no exception, not to mention your communications are encrypted and your calls are private, which is why the U.S. military and Senate uses them. Go to sat123.com or call 855-980-5830 to get your sat phone plan for as low as $86. Go to sat123.com or call 855 855- 980-5830 today. Be sure to tell them that End Time sent you. All right, Doug, red heifer ceremony in the next 11 days. What do you think? Well, you know, Vince, it's kind of up in the air right now. We really don't know what to think anymore because, you know, we, we talked about this the other day, I believe on uh, last Friday's program, we kind of talked about it a little bit because there was a rabbi who had put out a video and he was really kind of um, rebuking some of the things that was said in the CBS um, not only an article, but also a, a news story where they were actually showing a video of some of the sites there and showing an altar that he said wasn't even built. You know, the altar wasn't even an altar they're going to use for this. And he was really upset and he was saying, you know, people that are spreading these rumors are, are liars. That's what he said. He's very mm-hmm. harsh in what he was talking about. But we've only been reporting what we've received to report. And so... The other day, Vince, it's, it's very interesting because the uh, Temple Institute, remember we showed a picture of the young uh, oh. priest that mm-hmm. they were getting ready. They were getting him ready. He had never come in contact with a dead body or anything like that. And he was willing to do the sacrifice. And he's only one of a few that they have. I mean, uh, that they have taken from birth, were not born in a hospital or anything. They haven't been contaminated by being at a, a gravesite or anything like that. And so um, anyway, they released that like days after this rabbi put the story out. Well, then yesterday or I I can't remember what day it was this week. But one day this week, I received an article that uh, was sent to me from Newsweek. And it was entitled Holy War, Red Cows, Gaza and the End of the World. Newsweek wrote this major magazine that goes out all over the world. Not Christian. No. Not prophecy. Very secular. Yeah. And then the Temple Institute, a, a day after I received this, Temple Institute releases the same story, only they didn't say that it was Newsweek. They just put it on their Temple Institute page on Facebook. So I'm like, okay, well, the Temple Institute's putting this out there. So this is serious. They're not messing around. They've got the red cows. They've got a priest that can do the ceremony. They've got the property for the ceremony. They said all they needed was stones and sticks to have the altar. And so could it be done, that, to answer your question that you asked originally, could it be done on Passover this year, which is April 22nd or 23rd? But it's, it's like a week long. It yeah. starts on the 22nd. So what they're saying is, or what we've heard from Byron Stinson and others, is that it could happen at Passover or it could be as far out as Pentecost, which would be, I think, Uh, in June, like June the 7th, I think maybe is Pentecost to the Jews because of where it falls. We're going to have it. We celebrate it in May, uh, but it's actually going to be June. And so could it happen in that time span? It appears that it could. Are they trying to keep it more secret because of the news that's come out? And this is a major uh, news publication that came out. And I actually have two really cool articles that are saying basically the same thing. One comes from Al Jazeera's, and so that is a a perspective of the Muslim population. It's a Muslim paper. And then the other one is this Newsweek. So 
It's going to be interesting as we kind of go down through this program today because what I really wanted to do, Vince, was show why this is so sacred to the Jews because these articles make it sound as if the Palestinians and the Muslims have more right to that mountaintop than the Jewish people do. And yeah. so that's what I kind of want to highlight and talk about. Today. Well, and in doing so, you're going to highlight how it's also sacred to the Muslims, and we're going to see how all this is playing out. So yeah. Yeah. it's quite interesting, actually. And I think we probably need to address, for those that watch us regularly or maybe saw a headline uh, from one of our previous shows, we should address the elephant in the room, Doug. We did just pose a similar question right before Easter. Mm -hmm. We asked, will the red heifer be sacrificed this weekend? Right. And that was Easter weekend for people who celebrate Easter. Right. Of course, the Jews do not celebrate Easter. Mm -hmm. So we were getting some flack about that. Like, why in the world would they sacrifice the red heifer, excuse me, have the red heifer ceremony? Right. That is hard to shift in your brain. It is. Um, <laughs> why would they have the red heifer ceremony on Easter weekend? A, it's not Jewish. Mm -hmm. B, it's pagan. It's based off of a pagan um, God and all this, th all this stuff. So they're highlighting that and they're hammering us going, mm -hmm. you guys are morons. It's not going to happen Easter weekend because it's Easter. But you explain that. Could you go over that one more time? Yeah, because that was a particular Sabbath that in the book of Ezekiel and the uh, book of Numbers, they would celebrate that Sabbath and celebrate the red heifer ceremony then. And so that's why it was talked about. Now, if you remember also during that week, uh, they had a certain day events where they went to the location of where the red heifers were. They had a ceremony there that day where they were educating people and reading the scriptures about the red heifer and how important the red heifer ashes were. The, the publication said they were going to start there in Shiloh. Then they were going to go to one of the institutes there. Uh, and then from there, they would go to the Mount of Olives where the ceremony would take place. It said where the ashes would, the ceremony of the ashes would take place. So in even their own literature, it almost sounded like we're going to do it this day. So it sounded like, so we posed the question, could it actually be done before? So, you know, they're kind of flying it under radar there. Well, one of our friends uh, in Israel went to Shiloh to check on the cows and see. And, and so that Friday after that Wednesday, uh, when that ceremony was taking place, he went on Friday to see if the red heifers were all there and all four of them were indeed still there. He sent us back pictures. We showed the pictures on one of our programs to say, okay, so this didn't happen. So we weren't saying it was going to happen. I know people like to take everything we say and say, you guys said this. Well, we made very sure that we did not say they would indeed do it. We said it was a possibility or would they do it because of the information we received. Uh, you know, so anyway, you can go back and look at those videos and see we didn't ever say it was going to. We said could it because of that particular Sabbath they were celebrating that week and what they were telling the news media. So anyway, that's what we talked about. So, so just, just one more time. It had mm -hmm. nothing to do with Easter. Right. Nothing so. to do with Easter at all. It was a particular Sabbath that the Jews were celebrating that weekend. OK, so a regular Sabbath that happens on a Friday night to a Saturday night. That's their Sabbath. And they actually did the ceremony stuff during the week on Wednesday. Yeah. So um, anyway, we, we knew they wouldn't do it during Sabbath because that would be work. So we thought, well, it could possibly take place after that Sabbath on, on Saturday night and be in the cover of darkness and be done like that. But they did not do it. And um, so we're, we're still looking and we're still waiting. We know the government doesn't want Israel to do this right now because of the situation going on with the war. So, so much. Iran now, of course, uh, Hamas still. So yeah. there's so much happening all around Israel yeah. that they're going, please don't add one more thing to our plate. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And, and so, you know, we're... We're watching all these things, Vince, but as we're watching it, we're seeing that it's getting more hype and more information coming out. When you see something as big as Newsweek come out, and the, like I said, the reason why I wanted to, to really talk about this, we're watching anti-Semitism uh, come up so much mm -hmm. right now. Uh, even in our own area here, we have a, a large uh, Muslim population here in this area. Yes. And we're seeing protests on our highways in front of uh, some military buildings and things that make weapons. And so we're, we're seeing protests uh, a lot here in this area. 
And it seems like that is something that's happening all over. I mean, just yesterday I heard there was a huge protest that blocked some uh, event that was going on for uh, President Biden. And uh, that seems to happen more and more uh, as we're moving closer and closer to, um, you know, this this possible ceremony. So we're watching these things happen. We've heard, you know, we had the interview with the IDF officer. You asked her if it was possible that it could be because of the Temple Mount, because of the red heifers. And she looked at us like we were crazy and said, what does that have to do with anything? And then two or three weeks later, Hamas leader comes out and says it has everything to do with the red cows from Texas. Mm -hmm. So it's this is very important because the Islamic people, they believe that Israel intends to tear down the Dome of the Rock. And that's very sacred to them. And that's what these articles are talking about. But this article, you know, it, it poses a great question. It says uh, that a lot of people believe this is this area, Jerusalem, is where the world began and perhaps it will end. Well, we know that the kingdoms of men will end there because that's where the battle of Armageddon is going to take place. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we want to do today is kind of take you down through a timeline of events that are going to happen and show that this could be the beginning of those events. Before we continue on with that story, Doug, uh, right after Easter, um, the Temple Institute announced that they had the Cohen fit to perform the red heifer ceremony. Mm -hmm. Now you and I didn't talk about that on that previous show. Right. Uh, I hadn't even thought about it recently that, you know, we talked about they had the red heifer, mm -hmm. they had what they need for the sacrifice, they have the land, they have everything they need, and I'd forgotten this part of it, had not considered it until they posted that they have a Cohen fit to perform that red heifer. So now... Yeah, a Cohen being that priest we talked about. Yes, yeah. so now, from everything I understand, maybe you know something I don't, you know a lot of things I don't, but um, is it true to say that they aren't lacking anything? Like, they could do this today. They have everything that they need to make this happen today, except for government approval. Yeah, according to what they need for the ashes, yes. They have everything they need. Now that rabbi that we talked about before that released this public video and, and some articles debunking all this, he said there's a whole lot more to it that is not there for the building of the temple. But the but specifically the, the red ceremony heifer. for the red heifer, yeah, they've got everything they need. So the red heifer ceremony could happen in 11 days or before or shortly after. Yeah. In, in it could happen any day now. From what unlike we understand, the rapture, yeah. it could happen any day now. <laughs> yeah, unlike the rapture. <laughs> By the way, people thought we said the rapture was happening on the eclipse because we asked. I because know. people were asking us, will the rapture happen on the eclipse? Yeah. So we do a show, will the rapture happen this Monday? And people are hammering us about that too. You predicted the rapture was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and we never did. You clearly didn't <laughs> even watch three seconds of that video. No, so, no. Anyway, back to the red heifer ceremony, Doug. Yeah. It's possible that it could happen any day now. Certainly could happen during Passover. So that is unbelievable, Doug. Yeah, it's pretty unbelievable. And it, it's, um, I mean, it's really we, it, This has never happened in our lifetime. No. It never happened in our parents' lifetime. Vince, there hasn't even been a red heifer in 2,000 years, over 2,000 years. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, and there hasn't, definitely hasn't been a, a red heifer since the temple was destroyed in 70 AD by Rome. So here we are, they've looked. It's not that they haven't looked. They've been looking, I think, since 1987. They've been looking for a red heifer and they haven't been able to find one without spot or blemish. And then all of a sudden, um, Ty, um, I can't even, I'm trying to remember his last name now, uh, from, from Texas, from Rockwall, Texas. Uh, he has these red heifers and Byron Stinson and uh, the Jewish priests that were here went out. They looked at these red heifers. They found them. They're like, these are perfect. Uh, because of COVID, they had never been tagged because during the time of the COVID pandemic, they they didn't, uh, didn't tag these animals for whatever reason. And then the animals were able to be shipped to Israel in a way that normally you're not, they were shipped over there as pets and not really livestock for anything. And so they, they got them to Israel and they were only able to ship five of them. Mm -hmm. One of them became unkosher, so now there's four, and there still remains four. Now, one of my things that I think about in my mind is there is time for, if they don't do this ceremony soon, there's time for these to become unkosher because something could happen to them. I mean, they could rub up against a barbed wire fence and, and get a bad scar on them. Well, that's a blemish. 
or they could, you know, develop white hair somewhere uh, or get a spot of some kind or something could happen to them. They could be killed. I mean, if if people found out, you know, that they had access to them and could get to them, I mean, right now there's drone attacks going on in Israel. They could try to destroy these red heifers before they had a chance to do the ceremony. So their time is running out, I would think. Uh, but that's me. I don't know all the details, and I don't claim to know all the details. As a matter of fact, we don't have a problem with telling folks. We just don't know at this point mm -hmm. about things. And so um, right now, we don't know for sure if they're going to be able to do it or not, but we know that is their target time, and there's more and more news coming out about it. It's in the major news networks now. So in addition to the Red Ever, they have a lot of what they need for uh, building the temple as well. And, Doug, it's a good thing they have... All the gold, I know that was donated to them. I'm sure they had some already as well. We've seen it uh, over the years of traveling to Israel because gold's pushing all-time highs right now. So it's a good thing they've already got that. The cost of goods <laughs> continue to rise despite interest rate controls by the Fed. This is some of the reasons why gold is pushing all-time high. Of course, our national debt here in the United States, it continues to skyrocket. It's now above $34 trillion. I can't even think in those numbers, Doug. Uh, and then, of course, it's a presidential election year in 2024 here in the States. So the instability and the uncertainty is why so many Americans are turning to Birch Gold Group. Have you diversified your savings yet? Well, we should pray about securing a portion of them with gold from Birch Gold. Go to birchgold.com slash end time. Get your free info kit today. You're going to learn how to convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold, and it doesn't cost you a penny out of pocket. With tens of thousands of happy customers, you can trust Birch Gold, too. So visit birchgold.com slash end time to protect your savings from uncertainty today. So, Doug, what else do we need to know about this holy war that, of course, Newsmax has coined that, and they're asking about the end of the world. Right. Uh, what do we need to know in that story? Well, so in this article, like you just mentioned, a lot of the things are already done, and they have that in the article. The Temple Institute already have the utensils, they have the ceremony gowns, they have everything they need, even the huge golden menorah mm -hmm. uh, is there in the old city eyes, of Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah it, it weighs over 200 pounds and it's in a big in, enclosed glass container and it's beautiful. I mean, we've seen it, we've seen the children dance around it and that is in prophecy too, that the children would dance in the streets of Israel again. And so these things are beginning to happen. Uh, one of the things that this talks about in this is it, it in the Newsweek article it clearly says Hamas has proclaimed that they are waging a holy war for the Temple Mount that Hamas has said this because they believe like I said before uh, and we're not going to read all this article because it's a humongous article but they've said that they believe that to build that third temple, the Jewish people want to destroy the Dome of the Rock. Well, that's very sacred to them. Uh, it's their their third holiest site, Islam's. They believe that their uh, Muhammad, uh, their prophet, had ascended up on a donkey there. I can't remember the whole thing, the whole story. But anyway, there's there's a big story that goes with it. And uh, of course, we've got our our scriptures. We've got our Bible. And um, I know that they don't believe what the Bible says, and they really call this a, a religious myth of what the Jews are wanting to do. And they, they even try to claim that there's never been a temple there. So we're going to look at some of that in a minute. But I, one of the things I wanted to point out is this is what Israel believes, and this is what they want. They believe this will fulfill Isaiah 56, 7, that says that the holy temple would be a house of prayer for all nations. And that's even really in the Abraham Accord that uh, in, in the Abraham Accord that President Trump wrote, he said that that Temple Mount should be a place for all religious people to go and respectfully worship. And so he has the same mindset as the Jewish people about this situation. And we're going to look at it in a little while, but we know from Scripture that that Dome of the Rock can stay there, okay? People are jumping to conclusion that it has to be gone. Even some Jewish people are saying that it has to be gone, but we know that's not to be true because we know what Scripture says. But I also know that right, right now we wanted to show something from one of our uh, partners and, and friends with this ministry. So. Well, Doug, as you've been talking, I, I thought about this Tucker Carlson interview that just came out. He interviewed a, a Christian priest, I believe, from the yeah. West Bank. And they're highlighting how the Israeli government isn't favorable to Christians. Right. Now, I, I can't speak for that man's experience, of course, but you know we've had a building there 
um, since 2014, I believe, or excuse me, yeah, 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was 16. Uh, either way, whatever it was, we've had a building there for a decade or almost a decade, and we haven't had any issues. I know there are um, strict proselytizing rules, mm -hmm. laws. You're not allowed to proselytize Jews to try to convert them to Christianity or any other religion. Yeah. So I know that exists. I know that uh, we have friends there who are there, and they are disciples of Jesus. And of course, as disciples of Jesus do, they get established into the communities, connect with people, the light's shining, people start seeing the light in their own life, mm -hmm. and one thing leads to another. And so you can't go out and have a tent revival and say all Jews come for, uh, you know, giving out bikes and stuff like you see churches do here on <laughs> Easter or whatever day right. they're doing a big giveaway to get people there. Yeah. So, but you can't do that in Israel. But, um, you know, you're talking about being a house of prayer for all nations. So it's like, there is some type, some form of openness to other religions, but we know there are strict laws as well. Right. And I'm thinking about this video from our friend, uh, not not connected, not associated with. It's not in time doing this. This is no. him on yeah. his own, and he's in Israel right now. Is that correct? Yeah, he he got there a few days ago, and he's going to be there I think until the middle of the the month. And and they're out there, boots on the ground. Him Literally, and some, some other folks. And, and so he came into knowing us through one of our end time Bible studies here at this at this building. In our so, building? Yeah. I think you were teaching it? I was teaching that. He met Brother Baxter at a conference called, I think, the Watchers uh, Conference or Watchers on the Wall yeah. Conference. He met Brother Baxter there, was intrigued with what Brother Baxter had to say, started coming to the Bible study here, was, was in my class. We became friends. He rides a Harley. I ride a Harley. So we kind of connected there. But through all this, he, he was born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, and he is uh, out there trying to help and make a difference. And, and he's, he's with a group of other believers, uh, but it, this is not related to end time at all or, or even uh, you know to any ministry that we're related to. This is just a guy going to Israel with another we're group with. Of, of Christians. And yeah. he sent you a video this morning. Yes, he did. Let's check it out. Yeah. We went to Kibbutz Freedom today, which prayed and took back the land for Jesus. Uh, we were getting into a state of uh, repentance, starting to pray. We'd been there for a couple hours with nothing going on at all, just a lot of people out there mourning the grave sites and, and uh, the memorials they had up. And so then we decided to start praying for the land and praying, praying for the people. And as soon as we did that, the drones started flying over and the mortars started going off all around us. So it was like the enemy was distracting, uh, but we kept on pushing on. And it was beautiful. We, we prayed, we worshiped, we walked the entire place and released the Holy Spirit over the entire uh, land where the war broke out. And then at the end, we were in a circle, about 10, 12 of us, singing praises to Yeshua uh, because we can't use the name Jesus in Israel because the Israel people, Israeli people have had terrible things done to them in the name of Jesus, but Yeshua they will accept. And so as we had our eyes closed and singing worships to Yeshua, when I opened my eyes, there were, there were, Jewish people and soldiers standing all around our circle filming us and coming up and hugging us and saying thank you for standing with our people and many Jewish people and soldiers heard the gospel message today and some of them have invited us into their homes to share more about their Messiah and I just pray that the scales would fall off their eyes and they would be open to the truth. Anyway, tomorrow we go to the north to the real war zone so it's going to get crazy so keep me in your prayers. God bless you guys. Love you. Bye bye. Doug, we can say the name of Jesus in the chat. Yes, we can. If you're going to be praying with our brother there and uh, the group that he's with, put the name Jesus in the chat. Let us know that you're joining with him and really everyone around the world praying uh, for the efforts there. So, Doug, that's somebody. He said he can't say the name of Jesus. Right. But he's saying Yeshua. Yeah. Or he, he could say Jesus. He could say apparently <laughs> any of these other yeah. forms of Jesus. Yeah. And... Um, it's drawing people in. It's interesting. So yeah. we have a similar um, agenda, Doug. Right. When, when the, so connected to the Red Efforts, connected to the Temple Mount, when we see the Antichrist stand there and tell them to stop sacrificing, yeah. we know from Matthew 24, let those which live in Judea flee. We have plans to go there right. and get on the boots on the ground and warn the Jews what's coming. Yeah. Warnthejews.com, you can learn more about it there. Of course, we have a whole um, a video on that on uh, End Time Plus. So go search Warn the Jews. Go to warnthejews.com to learn more. We're 
That's what your sticker's about. That's what my here. sticker on my yeah. computer. You can get one of those stickers by <laughs> at warrenthejews.com. So, um, you know, we feel that burden. God spoke directly to Irvin in the 90s about this. He said, yeah. Lord, I see this is coming in the New Testament. The Jews don't read the New Testament. Who in the world's going to warn them about it? Right. Well, you know, Doug, we're not opposed to humanitarian efforts. We, we get involved in that as well. But we always try to emphasize, uh, let's get our spirit ready to meet the Lord. Yeah. And so w our main focus is not to go plant trees in Israel. And for people that do that, we're not crumbing on them, but that's just not our main focus. Right. Uh, our main focus is not to do those humanitarian efforts necessarily. We'll team up with people doing it, but that's not what we're focused. We want to get people ready uh, for eternity. Yeah. And so we said, who in the world's going to tell them? And the Lord spoke to Irvin and said, you are, end time is, you have your magazine, start getting ready. And so here over the years, we've been getting ready and um, you know, there's so much work to do. Yeah. There, there's so much that's going to happen. We don't even know how we're going to do everything. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of those things I was talking about the other day. I like plans and structure, <laughs> uh, but you know, in the end times, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be able to chart out, you know, an 18 right. step plan for navigating <laughs> the great tribulation. Okay. Absolutely. So we're going to have to walk by faith and we don't know how to do all this <laughs> stuff. Uh, we need you all to pray for us. We need you to join in on this crusade. Uh, go to warnthejews.com to learn more about that specific effort. Uh, and much more than donations, we, we do need finances to make this happen. There's no secret about that. Uh, but we also need expertise. We need people who know how to do a whole lot of things. If you're a printer, if you're a construction worker that has a specific set of skills, you're going to be able to be used in the kingdom and we're going to need your help, no doubt. So if the Lord's laying it on your heart to help, whether it be through giving of finances or giving of the skills that he has given you, um, team up with us. We need you. So send us a message at endtime.com slash contact. Let us know how you could help. If you want to donate, warnthejews.com. All right, Doug, sorry. Uh, I get fired up about this and thinking that there's fired actually boots them. on the ground and we're, they're going yeah. into war zones. Yeah. Soldiers are coming around them, thanking them. Mm -hmm. uh, that, it, we live in exciting times. We really do. It, it's very exciting. And I mean, we just got more of this to look forward to. All the signs are pointing to, we are getting ready for some great times coming. All right, are we gonna see that red heifer ceremony in 11 days? Stick around, we're gonna look at that a little bit more. We'll be right back after this break. A voice spoke to me and said, I've got something I want to show you. I was so sure God had talked to me, and I was stunned by what I saw. A direct fulfillment of this over 2,500-year-old prophecy. The United States will stand with Israel. Why haven't I ever seen this before? One third of humanity will die. What do these beasts symbolize? The lion, the bear, the leopard. The combined beast from Revelation 13 represents the end time government of the Antichrist. Understanding the end time. Now streaming on End Time Plus and available to order at endtime.com slash UET. Go to endtime.com slash UET or call 800 end time. What if you could understand Bible prophecy? Dave Robbins, the host of the End Time Show's TV and radio programs, is holding a free prophecy conference near you. Gain peace and understanding about what the Bible says concerning end time prophecy. Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com slash events to see when Dave will be in a location near you. Welcome back to the End Time Show. Vince Stegall here with Doug Norbell. We're happy you've joined us today. Will we see the Red Heifer Ceremony in 11 days? Stick around to find out uh, what our thoughts on that. I do want to tell everyone, um, Dave, Doug, and I, and their wives will be at the Ready Now Expo in Blue Eye, Missouri tomorrow and Saturday. Dave will be participating in several panels and uh, he'll be preaching Friday night at the service that they're having. 
So if you're in the Blue Eye, Missouri area, I have no idea if it's too late to register or not, Doug. Do you know anything about that? I have no idea. Well, <laughs> either contact Jim Baker's like Morningside Church. Um, contact them and see if you can still join. I know they have online options and they also have um, in-person options. So we'll be there hanging out. We'd love to connect with you while we're there. So um, there's going to be a lot of a lot of people there because Dave's going to be on a panel. And so we'll probably Multiple, get to... Dave will be on like four or five panels yeah. in the two days. And we'll get to talk to people we haven't ever got to talk to before yep. and reach some folks we've probably never been able to reach. So it's going to be pretty pretty awesome experience. Yeah, that starts tomorrow. So search uh, Ready Now Expo Jim Baker. I'm sure you'll find it uh, in your search engine. Um, also, Doug, man... You've got this massive first cup coffee cup. Uh, mm -hmm. That's like half a pot of coffee right I there. can't even imagine how much coffee fits in there. So, <laughs> You uh, brought me that back from first cup the other day. I appreciate that. It's I did. Nice. 32 ounces is what we're told, so I can't <sighs> imagine it now. Um, great coffee. Great coffee shop in Houston if you want to go in person, yeah. uh, Pearland specifically. Uh, first cup, they're a Christian-owned Patriot coffee company. We love them. They love us. They're roasting right out of the great state of Texas. They're in Pearland. I've seen it. With my own eyes, we put a video up last week of it. Uh, they've got 11 different roasts, each one named after a specific piece of American history. You can get one of those roasts by going to firstcup.com. And if you use code ENDTIME, they're going to give you 10% off. So if you subscribe, they'll give you another 10 So you can get up to 20% off when you use code ENDTIME and subscribe. Go to firstcup.com. Use code ENDTIME to get that 10% off today. All right, Doug. Back to the red heifer ceremony. Yeah. We've already said it's it's... They have everything they need to do this ceremony, right. to our knowledge, and it very well could happen today. It very well could happen during Passover, which starts in 11 days. So that is possible. Yeah. We have no insider information that says it's going to happen, but it is possible. Right, and, and we're not saying for sure it's going to happen, okay? So folks, just listen to that. I'm telling you at the halfway mark here in the program. We don't know, but here, here's what we do know. This, these articles are coming out, and these are major articles, and other people are finding out now about what's going on there. So the, the last thing I want to read from this Time Week magazine is I want to read this because this is, uh, I, I want to say his name right, but I can't remember if it's Yitzhak Ravine was his name. That was a friend of, of Pastor Baxter's. He, he mentioned him many times on the program, and he would talk to this gentleman. Uh, he is the director of the Temple Institute there in, uh, and now he's over the international department. He gave this quote to Newsweek. He said, the Muslims correctly understand the historical and religious significance of the Temple Mount for the Jewish people. And therefore, they focus their incitement on the Temple Mount. So he's saying that's why the Muslims want to raise Cain up on uh, the Temple Mount. They want to cause all kinds of problems for it. Right now, the only people that can pray on the Temple Mount are Muslims that can pray there. No Christian, no Jewish people can pray there. Even though people do and they pretend to be talking on their cell phones or drop a coin or whatever, there's still prayers going on. I've prayed there myself. So if that makes me a war criminal or something, y'all come get me. But uh, he says that in effect, this war in Gaza right now is very much a war over the Temple Mount. So a few things I want to point out this morning is why Mount Moriah is, that's the Temple Mount, okay, folks? And I kind of want to show you this so you understand that this is Mount Moriah we're talking about. Because, you know, Vince, um, UNESCO, the, the educational uh, facility there for the UN, they like to, to say that the Jews never really had a temple on the Temple Mount, that this was part of the fortress there, that the Romans, that's where the Romans had their fortress and all these things. Um, and that the temple was really down in Mount Zion. Well, mm. I want to kind of explain why we know that's not true because that's, that's a straight up lie from the devil, okay, to say that there was a temple down in the city of David. That's what they try to say. The temple was on the Temple Mount, and we know that for sure because there's been artifacts found there. Uh, we've been underneath in the rabbinical tunnels where they had the tunnels to get back and forth to places. Uh, we've even seen where the trumpeting stone was found, things like that when we've gone there, the Robinson Arch. Now they've discovered the, the pilgrim's passageway that goes from the Pool of Shalom up to uh, the, the temple. So that's where people would come in and they would do their ritual cleansing in the Pool of Shalom and then they would walk up the pilgrim's path 
there would be merchants on the side where they would buy the animals to sacrifice at the temple. So all these things are there, and we know for sure. But Mount Moriah is the place in Genesis 22. I won't take time to read all these scriptures to you, but this is where Abraham was told to go and sacrifice his only son Isaac, which in the passage we're also told that he told his son he had the faith that God would provide a ram for the sacrifice. And Doug, let me let me make sure people really hear what you're saying. I know yeah. people that are have been studying the Bible for years. They know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. But there's younger folks and even older folks that don't know these stories very well. Yeah, you're absolutely. And they've heard correct. about Mount Moriah. Mm-hmm. Of course, they've seen the Temple Mount stuff in the in in news and on yeah. social media. Of course, you are saying that Mount Moriah, where Abraham offered Isaac or began to. Yeah. That is where the ten, where the Dome of the Rock is right now, like in that area, in that the area. Temple Mount. Yeah. So that's yeah. the same exact place. We can trace that all the way back to Abraham, mm-hmm. and that's that's where he went up on the mountain and, and right. offered Isaac. Right. And remember, the Muslim people they believe that Abraham is the father of their faith as well, but they believe that the promised son was not Isaac, but that it was. Um, Ishmael. Thank you, Ishmael. So they believe Ishmael was the favored son. And remember now how... Now Ishmael is Abraham's son. Yes, he is. So Abraham is their father. Right, but... Father Abraham had many sons. I'm yes, sure you've sang that song. I have sang that song. And uh, and so that they believe, though, that, that Isaac was not the promised son. And so they don't, they don't hold to any of this, okay? So anyway, this is, this is what um, the Bible is telling us in Genesis 22. So for those of you that may have never heard the story before, you can go there and read Genesis 22. And you can read about it, all this because in Genesis uh, 22, 14, uh, Abraham calls this place Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide because of the fact that when he was getting ready to sacrifice his only son, the angel stopped him and the Lord provided a ram that was caught in a thicket and they brought the ram over. They sacrificed the ram and God said because of Abraham's faith that all nations would be blessed. Many people would be blessed because of um, his faith and what he did that day. So that's a place you can look for that in Genesis, the very first chapter of the Bible. You can go there. God spent so many chapters on Abraham because Abraham was such an important figure. And um, then if you look in 2 Samuel 24, 1 Chronicles 22, uh, you see the story of how David came about buying the threshing floor of Arana, okay? And so this is Mount Moriah as well. That is what is up there, like you talked about, well, go under the Dome of the Rocks, that's there. So 2 Samuel 24, 18 through 24, 1 Chronicles 21, 21 through 30, tell the story. Remember what happened was David had counted the number of people in Israel, even though he was told from God not to do that. And he caused this sin. Well, because of that, he had to choose from a prophet of which of the judgments that would come upon Israel. And when it did, he prayed to God and God told him, if you'll go do this and build an altar there for me, then it'll stop. Now for our viewers, we've got a map. Yeah, let's, so so this map, let's show this. This is a topographical map. And if you don't know anything about uh, surveying or anything, I I actually was a surveyor. Most people are looking at this and their eyes are spinning. Yeah, so, so the very, if you're looking at this map, in the very center of that map, you see Mount Moriah. That is the Temple Mount. It says Temple Mount on it. Yeah, it does. It's inside this. But down below is uh, Mount Zion, okay? And so here's a little bit of history of that. I want to show you this because I want you to understand that the mountaintop would have to be higher. So let me just kind of talk about this. In this topographical map, it shows Mount Moriah is, it's not really a single peak. You can see it's a ridge that goes along there, okay? But on the very highest point of this is where that rock was, okay? Where the the threshing floor of Arana was. Uh, it says that between this, uh, the southern end at the junction is the Kidron Valley. We go through that every year when we go to Israel to make it over to the Temple Mount. We take the, the group from the Mount of Olives through the Kidron Valley, and we come up through the Hinnom Valleys at the original city of David, okay? So the original city of David, it's approximately 600 meters. The ridge of uh, Mount Moriah goes to 777 meters. So it's much higher, okay? And the reason why that's important, because what happened was the threshing floor would have been kind of small, Vince, and that's where they would have brought in the wheat 
and they would have had the cattle walk over it to crush it. And, and we don't have down. any photos of that. We don't. Okay. And, and they would have like, um, they, they're like pitchforks. If you think of a pitchfork, they pick up that wheat, they throw the chaff up in the air, and the wind would carry that off. Well, you wouldn't want to do that in your city, down in the city of David, because it needs to be a higher elevation where the wind catches that and carries it away from the city, and then that way it doesn't pollute your water streams. Now, the Gihon Springs come down through here, but not in an area where that chaff would be going out, and that's what is, uh, feeds the, the Pool of Shalom at the bottom of the Temple Mount. So that's why that's kind of important that everybody knows and everybody believes to this day that the Dome of the Rock is actually over that threshing floor. That's the one place where you can see the actual stone that's there on the floor and that's where the Dome of the Rock is located. And we have pictures of the Temple Mount too. Yeah, let's show the picture of the Temple Mount because I want you to see there's the A Dome A little more of the interesting. Rock. Yeah. <laughs> So, so right there in the center of what you see there, that wall that's built around that. There's a yellow circle, I think. You yeah. See that? So there's a big square that that dome's sitting in, mm -hmm. and that's a retaining wall with the gates that are coming into the Temple Mount area. And the one that we're, if you, if you look at that, you see that it's got a big circle around that. That's the western gate, I mean, I'm sorry, the eastern gate right there. So the eastern gate that is sealed shut, okay? Now if you're standing on the Mount of Olives, many people have seen this photo where you're yeah. standing on the Mount of Olives and you're looking over at the Dome of the Rock. Right. There's this huge yellowish wall, that's what's circled here. Yeah. It looks like there's another wall at the top of that circle that's right before you get to the Dome of the Rock. Just yeah. want to clarify for folks that that's, that lower wall is what you're seeing in all those the, the most popular photos. Yeah, and so that that lower wall that we're talking about, that's where that eastern gate is. That's the gate that's sealed, uh, the one that prophecy says will be open when Messiah returns. And you know, we believe that when Jesus' feet touch that Mount of Olives and that great earthquake happens, that that whole thing's going to be split into three different parts there. And so. Anyways, having said that, as we go and we look at the Dome of the Rock, it's in the center of that platform. If you look just north of the Dome of the Rock there, there is a place where everyone is in agreement that the temple could be placed there. And some even say there's a smaller dome you can't really see well in that picture, but it's called the Dome of the Spirits, and they believe that's where the Holiest of holy, Holies was. And so, Revelation 11, 1 and 2, Vince, tells us, that John was told to measure the temple, but do not measure the outer court for it be given to the Gentiles, okay? So that area where the Dome of the Rock is, that would be considered in that outer court area where the Gentiles would uh, tread it down for 42 months. That's talking about the peace plan. That's talking about a time when they can share that area. So, I mean, I guess we'll get more into this. It seems like these breaks just come really fast. They sure do. <laughs> we need that second hour, Doug. I know. You want the second hour? Let us know in the comments. I don't think enough of you have responded yet. So let us know. Put uh, two hours down there. Or maybe three. Why are we shortchanging them, Doug? Right. All right, we'll be right back after the break. They that understand what is taking place will instruct many. Except a man is born again, he can enter or see the kingdom of God. I don't care what label you've been given or what label you've given yourself, you are essential. You still matter. This is a journey, and when we get to the other side of that, that's where our prize is, that's where our reward is. End time is not going anywhere. to the End Time Show. Ben Stigall here with Doug Norvell. We're so happy you've joined us today. I do want to remind you that our um, response to YouTube demonetizing us, censoring us, uh, shadow banning us is still happening. You can go to watch.endtime.com, use coupon code YouTube to get End Time Plus for less than $6 a month. When you do that, okay, you're going to get access 
to Irvin's last work, Revelation, the unveiling of Jesus Christ. He did 21 episodes going chapter by chapter in the book of Revelation. He recorded the last one three or four weeks before he passed away, and we had to produce it after he had passed. That is available for streaming there. You can get on there and watch all 21 episodes as fast as you'd like. Of course, Dave Robbins did Understanding the End Time, which is our foundational series and we incorporate clips from Irvin in that as well. Those are 14 episodes that are available for streaming on End Time Plus and on and on. Doug's The Two Witnesses, I've done Warn the Jews. We've done several other works there. There's literally thousands of hours of content that's available for um, free when you're a subscriber. If you use code YouTube, you'll get it for less than $6 a month. So do that today and again, uh, I can't tell you everything happening because we're not ready to say because there's so much to figure out. But there are incredible things in the works. The Lord is opening up doors that uh, we have dreamed about, we have prayed about. Irvin used to talk about them and nothing ever really came to be in some of those things. But God gave him this vision uh, many years ago and doors have been swinging open for the last six months. And 2024, Doug, let me just tell you, 2024 is a wild year already. It's going to yeah. get even more wild. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with the political climate of our country. Mm -mm. It has nothing to do with war around the world. But it has everything to do with what I'm referencing, with what God's been doing here at End Time, yeah. with our team, with the organization as a whole. And, oh, my word, you want to be a subscriber to End Time Plus uh, because there's some stuff coming that way. Uh, in the coming months that is just going to be uh, earth shaking, Doug. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's definitely God's hand is in that situation completely. I, I'll just tell you, you're not ready. <laughs> you are not ready. And the only way that I can assure you that you're going to know about it is if you subscribe to End Time Plus because we're not going to be censored there, uh, not going to be shadow banned there. All those subscribers get notified and of course have access to basically everything we've ever done. So the new stuff that comes uh, will be available there as well. So be sure to join up with End Time Plus. Use code YouTube right now for the monthly subscription to get it for less than $6 a month. All right, Doug, yeah. if I don't stop talking about that, I could talk about it all day. I can't wait to be able to share those details. I can't either. We can do a whole show that day about it. Well, you know, the other day in Devotion, <laughs> um, uh, I think it was Monday, you and I talked, mainly me, believe it or not, um, for 41 minutes, Doug. Yeah. It's usually 5 to 10, 12 minutes, yeah. but I just couldn't stop telling everybody about what the Lord's been doing. It's been incredible. So yeah. just keep praying for end time if you're out there. Listen, pray for us. Let us know you're praying for us. We appreciate it so much. Yeah. All right, Doug, um, back to the subject at hand. The red heifer ceremony, is it going to happen in 11 days? We're not saying yes. We're not saying no because we just don't know, but it's very yeah. possible that it could. Yeah, and, and so today we, we talked about these two different articles that are talking about that very subject and the Temple Mount specifically and the temple, the third temple. So these are things, the reason why we get so excited about this and the reason why we keep wanting to reiterate this and teach you about this is because we've been talking about it for a very long time. These are things that uh, were revealed to Pastor Baxter a long time in prophecy. As we continue on, we see other things that are beginning to happen and God is showing us new revelation to some things. So it's amazing at uh, how the Holy Spirit moves and guides. And he wants us to know this. Jesus told us uh, in, in the scriptures that the reason why he tells us prophecy is because when those things become, uh, begin to come to pass, that your faith will build. You'll have faith because he's told you about it before it happens. So we've been talking about this for a long time. So there's a huge faith builder around here to see these type of things, even though we're in a time of, uh, you know, the birth pains, I believe uh, Matthew 24 talks about. We're in an exciting time to be a Christian right now because so many things are beginning to happen. And if you want to read these articles, we have links to these articles on our Facebook page at endtime.com uh, too, I, I suppose. They are listed at endtime.com, absolutely. Okay. And so this is a second article. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to just kind of tell you what it says because it basically says what the Newsweek article says. But this is from Al Jazeera. It says, what do... Now, before we go there, Doug, yeah. Al Jazeera, uh -huh. is that a Christian publication? It is not. It is not. It is a Islamic... Is it Jewish? No. Is Islamic okay. uh, publication. So it, it is saying, what do Texas red heifers have to do uh, with the Alaska and the Jewish temple? That's the title of the article. Yeah. And it came out on the 9th. So 
um, what was that, Tuesday. So it came out on the 9th. And um, it says the exact same thing pretty much, but it talks about how the Jewish people want to destroy the Dome of the Rock, which has been there for 1,300 years. And they go through all of that, talking about it. They talk about why they have fears of this happening. They call this a detestable religious myth. And they say that is why they have armed fighters ready to defend the Alaska Mosque, the Dome of the Rock, and that Temple Mount. They say that they have a right to it, that the Jewish people are occupiers, that they've been occupying for a long time, but it's specifically they call them out in 1967. When that 1967 war happened, Israel was able to regain the Temple Mount. This article talks about all of that. And, uh, and it says that these red heifers are the problem, the, the whole reason why these things are happening. So they are in fear of this. And you got to think about it being from Texas, too. We've had our borders open for the last three and a half years, and there are all kinds of people making their way into here. And we know for a fact that some people are terrorists that have made it into this country. They actually just arrested a terrorist the other day here in Texas uh, that was part of Hamas and and they found all that out and he was a very young man that they caught. So think about that. They're in Texas and they know the red heifers came from Texas. They hate the Jews. They want to destroy everything the Jews are doing. They want to utterly wipe the Jews off the face of the earth, folks. Well, what do you think they're going to do in Texas? It makes me wonder if they're going to start something here as well. So anyway, we'll just have to kind of wait and see how all those things play out. But we know that we have terrorists here that do not like the United States. Now, now, from a well. Bible prophecy perspective, Doug, yeah. do you have any basis from a Bible prophecy perspective to say that we will experience war on American soil? I, I don't have anything specifically that says that we will, but what we do know is that six trumpet wars getting ready to happen. And you can find that in, in Revelation 9, uh, 13 through 22 there. It talks about uh, this war, this six trumpet war, which we've also called uh, World War III events. And we know that that's coming. We know it's going to kill one third of mankind. We, we believe that it starts in the area of the Euphrates River because of these four angels that are bound up. It says that this army of 200 million men will kill one third of mankind. Now, the entities on earth that can do that, one of them is Islam. Okay, The other one's China. The other one is uh, India that could possibly fill a military that size. But it could be a joined together force, too. Uh, you know, we know Russia has now moved into the Golan Heights to help protect Syria because of a bombing that happened um, last weekend with uh, Israel bombing Damascus and blowing up uh, an embassy there that had a, a Iranian uh, terror leader there and, and part of their Republican Guard. And so there's a lot of turmoil going on in that area right now. Now. America is guilty of a lot of things that we should get judgment for here in this nation. Uh, it's one reason why the other day we call for people to, to fast and repent. You know, I mean, that's part of what the book of Jonah was talking about. And so many people were saying so many things about that eclipse. I just challenged everybody, hey, use it as a day of repentance, fasting and prayer. You know, and we should do that all the time anyway. Every day. We, we need to do that. But we know this war is coming. So there's one step that we're looking for. Okay. So I've kind of laid this out in the last few minutes we got, but we also know Vince that after that war happens, that uh, there's going to be a peace agreement. And this red heifer story is a huge part moving toward the building of the third temple, because in that peace agreement in Daniel 9, 27, you can look and that's where the peace agreement is. He shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. That's a seven year period. That's where Daniel's final 70th week starts, that final seven years. A lot of people think that final seven years is full of uh, tribulation, but it's not. Half of it looks like peace, and in the middle of it, the Antichrist is revealed. Tribulation starts, okay? So those are things that we're looking for. But that Numbers 19 red heifer is a key part to Israel to be able to build that third temple. This peace treaty is the other huge part of it because that's where we believe that sharing arrangement will come from that I talked about before in Revelation 11, 1 and 2. Uh, so those are things that we see that could happen here very soon. There's a ton of other things that we talk about, like the abomination of desolation. Uh, Vince, we know what that is because Scripture tells us, Daniel 11:31 and 36, 
both talk about the same thing that 2 Thessalonians 2 talks about, that the man of sin, that he'll stop the daily sacrifices, he'll place the abomination uh, that causes desolation, and that is when he stands in a rebuilt Jewish temple. It's another in 2 Thessalonians 2. It tells us that this man of sin will stand in a rebuilt Jewish temple and he'll proclaim that he is God and to be worshipped as God. That's the abomination of desolation. Daniel eleven thirty six 36 says that's what he does. He exalts himself. He magnifies himself above the God of gods. So it lets us know that those things are coming. Jesus also warned us about that in Matthew 24. And this is how we know there's going to be a, Jew, a Jewish state alongside a Palestinian state there because Matthew 24, 15 through 21, Vince tells us that when the abomination and desolation happens, to let those Jews who be in Judea flee. The whole reason why we started warn the Jews, to mm -hmm. let them know in those settlement areas where it's going to be Palestinian controlled, those Jewish people are going to have to run when this event happens because great tribulation comes. That's in verse 21. Great tribulation such as never was before and never shall again be. And that's how we know that that happens in the middle and we've got three and a half years until the return of Jesus Christ. And the reason why we know that is because Scripture tells us over and over again the timing. In Daniel 7:25, it says it'll be for a time, times, and the dividing of time when the Antichrist shall wear out the saints. Revelation 11, John tells us a different measure of time. He says uh, that it's going to be, or I mean, Revelation 13, he says uh, in Revelation 13, 5, that he's going to continue for 42 months, and it was given to him to make war against the saints and overcome them. So that's that three and a half year period we see. So Vince, we are very close to that final seven years starting if this war is, if it indeed turns into that six trumpet war and we see one third of mankind, we know that they're already talking about a peace agreement coming into Israel. They're already saying, look, we need a two state solution and a peace agreement to come out of this Hamas Israel war right now. Well, this war is getting ready to expand even further. Mm -hmm. And so if that happens, we could see the start of all these things. And that's why I get excited about it. Well, Doug. You know, I'm looking at it going, we used to joke because Irvin would say, you know, seven to ten years. Yeah. He said that a lot. He did. <laughs> and that's because he knew once this happened, that was the beginning of the final seven years. Yeah. And so there was, that could have happened at any moment. And that's one right. of those things that is still true. That could happen, that's absolutely you know, soon. True. Now, there's a lot going on that would say, you know, don't expect it to happen this week. Right. But... Technically, it could happen, and so I'm looking at it going, okay, in the next seven to ten years, we could see this war that kills a third of mankind, we mm -hmm. could see a peace treaty, we could see the red heifer being, uh, the red heifer ceremony happening, the temple being rebuilt, right. the great tribulation beginning, the antichrist being revealed, the world religious system being revealed, yeah, and more. Yeah, and, and a whole more. lot more. And a whole lot more. So you need to get on board yeah. with Jesus if you're not already, and you might think you are. Okay, a lot of people think they're on board with Jesus and then he tells them to do something. They go, well, not that, Lord. So you need to pray. Ask the Lord uh, to open your mind, open your heart, open your spirit. Be self-honest with who you are and what God's calling you to be and get on board because there's a lot unfolding before our very eyes. Will this red heifer ceremony happen in 11 days? Well, we don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. And then a lot could unfold shortly thereafter. We'll be right back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Central. See you there.